So, other movies. Oh, my bad. Other movies. I thought it was a game. I I kind of like read something about games. When is Dragon Ball Z a bridge coming out? Oh, that's one. That whoa, that's one of the videos. So we are we we are uploading probably this week or next week. It's on our list. We have a long list, guys. We have to pick and choose which one is we are dropping because we we want we want to give everybody's requests, you know. So as much as we can, we want to like give everyone's requests if it's not copyrighted, you know. Well, so this guy, this one is a request from our Discord crew, and the title is X Men Evolution Disney Semper, Semper, Disney Semper. <laughs> anyways guys so let's see how it is uh, i feel like it's like um not i feel like it might be because of the title might be an evolution of the x-men movies or characters or who knows but guys i can't wait to watch this hopefully you can't wait to watch this let's start the video guys Disney Sembler. Is it too loud, guys? I'm sorry. Oh, no. So for the longest time, I avoided X-Men Evolution because I got the feeling it was trying to mix the X-Men comic and cartoon show with the X-Men movies. And mm. I like the X-Men movies, okay, but I thought they should stay there because, you know, they're trying to make it more adult and grounded. As well, that's true. That's true. Before we continue this, that's true. I feel like comics and movies are has to be like separated because it might it might be good that they're the same but i feel like the one is comic they have their own situation they have their own like path to go and then what the movies is just movies is just a movie you know um we don't know if there's a next movie or if it's their upcoming um episode or seasons on this but comic book they have to continue and continue and continue until they finish it you know so i feel and every time every time there's movie there's always like a twist in it so if you want to read the comic you will be reading something else and then i was like you will think oh let me watch the movie because it might be like the same but when you watch the movie there's things that you will you will ask yourself like oh this is not in the comic or oh it was supposed to be this in the comic but why they're changing it so this must be this this might be our right thing like it will be might be separately because it's better like that but who knows guys let me know your 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 opinion about it guys in the comment section below let's go back it's not what i wanted out of x-men of course love the adult themes but i wanted to go big and epic and that's not really what the movies were they tried to be, but they were too busy saying yellow spandex was silly, so you know, I guess we're gonna lean away from it being, you know, comic booky. Why would I want that on a comic book show? You get where I'm coming from. But after a ton of people told me it was really, really good, and it's also where X-23 came from, I had to check it out. Come on, let's become like a big character. Be like not watching Batman the Animated Series when you find out Harley Quinn is from there. So I finally sat through every single episode, and... Yeah, people were pretty right. This is really, really pretty damn good. As good as the original animated series? Eh, it looks that's pretty good. It's a complicated. The setup is a little strange, but honestly kind of clever when you think about it. It takes place very clearly in the early 2000s. Well, before we continue, as as much as I want to explain myself, there's a lot of... um x-men shows or comic or movies i haven't really watched um i'm kind of fan of it but i never really had the background of like oh i'll have to watch this and that and then back to back to back to back to back you know and stuff like that and i just noticed that we finished the rap battles i forget how fast those i know i i thought i was just thinking about that when it finished i was like that was it but you know we have to continue the show so i have to understand and just let it go but let's go back to the video yeah that style sometimes does get in the way 
all throughout the series they have these edits where it just suddenly cuts to black and white and shots you just saw with sound effects and then back to the story. There is no reason for it. It just exists because the early 2000s did it. Mm. Mutants are just starting to be found out. Honestly, it's kind of like that looks a so cool. Secret. This is some so people cool. know, some don't, and yeah, it's a little hard to believe when you see just how damn many there are, but you give it a little leeway. Some mutant teens are brought into the Xavier School for gifted youngsters, and others are being manipulated by a school Ooh. principal who's secretly mystique in disguise, trying to get the oh, strongest and course. baddest to join the army of, of Magneto, who, you guessed it, sees humanity as a threat and must be destroyed. Xavier has a few teachers at his school, including Wolverine and Storm, and plenty of students, including Cyclops, Jean, Nightcrawler, Kitty, Rogue, Spike, the list goes on. One of the interesting things is while, yes, Xavier does have a school, Oh, this is really cool. It's my first time watching the comic part of X-Men. I am shocked of how it is shown. Like, all I remember was watching the movie or the show. But I never watched the com- I'm sorry, guys. I'm just pausing the video. It's just very- It amazed me how, how it is. I missed a lot. I should start watching it. At least, at least this one. It looks so cool. It looks like a classic X-Men. Well, it's mainly for mutants, and it's mainly just teaching them about their powers. The kids still do go to a regular school, where they not only have to interact with humans, but also the bad mutants, the one that Mystique is trying to make an army of. Mm. And at first, I really didn't like the idea of making them younger again. Something about Cyclops being a kid and Wolverine being an adult. I mean, I know it's already a big age difference in the comics, but I felt like they should both be grown-ups butting heads. But what the show reminded me is that, honestly, high school life can be very interesting. That was the initial idea of X-Men. It was young people who had these powers and they were outcasts. And yeah, high school's a perfect place to really explore this. I feel like a lot of teens can see this and really sympathize. Hell, a lot of adults can see this and sympathize remembering mm. what it was like to be a teen. It actually kind of captures it pretty well. The powers only enhance the drama the characters are going through. Rogue, by far, has some of the most dramatic... I'm sorry, the show? Isn't it a show or a movie? I'm not sure. I'm just asking too. I'm not really like, I didn't really know about this. That's why I'm like so into it because I haven't really watched this, but this is very, very interesting. Dramatic stuff in all of the show. Something they add in there, which yes, was part of the character, but not really explored that much, is that when she sucks out a person's powers and abilities and energy and stuff, she gets their memories too. And in one episode, she loses control and just starts changing into Ooh. all the people she's ever touched. That is so goddamn clever. That's like commentary out of a monster movie, because you can read a lot into that. When that you is mentally crazy, and yeah. physically get too close to someone, you kind of take on their identity or searching for identity or wow. becoming different people, trying to find yourself. But the show doesn't hammer it in either. It kind of has all these themes and ideas that you can read into, but never straight up says we're... Oh my gosh. That scared me, I'm sorry. I'm not your prison. Saying this, <laughs> I like the kind of work in there's a reason she's called Rogue. Like at first she doesn't know if she wants to join the bad guys or the good guys mm -hmm. and sometimes she'll change sides and I really thought I wasn't gonna like her because they took away the flying and the super strength and the cheerful personality. I mean, that's Rogue to me, but yes, this does definitely harken back to her earlier. Wait, Lyra, what's your favorite X-Men character? Wolverine, of course. Of course. But <laughs> that's my favorite character. But I haven't really had the chance to watch these movies or shows. I don't know. I would have been probably I, w I didn't know. Or what's ever on the TV, that's what I watch type thing. So, yeah. You know your days and i kind of forgot how much you can do with her just sucking out a person's energy and powers like not being able to touch anyone that's enough i knew the yeah, show was working where she crazy. has to interact with mystique as a statue and i won't go into spoilers but i legitimately Please don't. gasp when i saw <laughs> what they did i always say anything that gets me to gasp is doing something really right but the show also has some really good humor i like seeing all these characters interact off each other Nightcrawler is probably the most likable I've ever seen him outside of the comics. 
I guess in movies and the animated series, you couldn't really have that much time with him, so his really likable personality couldn't rub off as much. But here, he's one of the main leads, and he is impossible not to enjoy. Toad, he's just Toad. so upbeat and fun. He gets in trouble, but he's not a brat. He's always looking on the bright side of stuff, even when things are going to shit, and it's really infectious. I know Most somebody. Of the characters are like that. Even if you start off not enjoying them that much, you eventually will. I was shocked how invested I was getting with Cyclops and Jean, two of the most. No, I was shocked to the how I how I am very invested to this because I never watch it and it's, this is it looks so cool. It looks so very interesting. Like I don't know why I missed this. Why? <laughs> Most boring characters I never got into in X-Men, but I really like how Jean is always trying to find the peaceful path, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but she always gives it a shot. <gasps> she always wants to talk it out, and she's good at it, but she has her limits, too. I also really like seeing Cyclops grow. I feel like they were trying to do this in X-Men Apocalypse, where they have him kind of like this badass rogue, like, oh, oh, I don't play part of the team, whatever. But there, that made no sense, because it's just a movie. In a show, you can really explore this. And it is fun seeing him be kind of this cocky know-it-all jock, who eventually, over time, has to learn some real responsibility and become a leader. I really love when he finally does start butting heads with Wolverine, and yeah, you feel this definite change, and you kind of see, oh, like, this does kind of make sense, and you see where this rivalry kind of started. And they do have different ways- So, the way he's explaining it right now is just, it really makes sense to watch it, watch the comic, like, because you will know the full story of everything, which is, makes sense. Movie is just, you know, there's a main topic, main goal that they have to show you. But the show itself, it will show you the whole thing. So, yo, I'm not, I, I really want to watch this. I really want to watch this. After five years, that's what Chris said when we were talking about watching animes and stuff. So it might be five, after five years, but definitely we're watching it, guys. Ways of going about things and you see where they come from. With that said, there are a few characters that are weirdly kind of oh. sidelined. Okay, not weirdly because any character is sidelined, there's a lot of characters, but I bizarrely felt Wolverine and Storm didn't get much attention. Like, they're there and they'll get an occasional episode about them, but compared to other shows, movies, and comics, I didn't feel like they got a ton of attention. But in a weird way, that's kind of refreshing. It's not like we're short of Wolverine material. There is literally mm -hmm. a show called Wolverine and the X-Men. I really like we're focusing more on these side characters. Oh my god, I totally forgot Boom Boom was a thing. Hell, boom, I forgot boom. Act Force even existed. And it's really fun seeing boom, these boom, characters boom. interact off each other. At first I thought I was really gonna get turned off by the constant love triangles and people just kind of flip-flopping from one mate to another, but then again, that is kind of high school. They'll kind of put two random characters together you wouldn't think would go together, and yeah, you're right, they don't. But they're very clever at not dwelling on it too long and just showing the interesting stuff. Sometimes when a young couple breaks up, it can be heartbreaking, but other times it's like, yeah, nah, didn't work, I'm on to the next person already. And it's surprisingly believable. The villains are also a lot of fun. I really love the Brotherhood is kind of like a frat house and they mess up everything, and they're legitimately pretty funny. Mystique as a principle at first I really didn't like, but then again, the more I thought about it, it does make sense. This is not a bad way to get a lot of impressionable young mutants together to mm -hmm. exploit them for your own evil needs. That Magneto is legit kind of creepy in this. Whenever he shows- Watch the comic. Yeah, watch the comic or read the comic. Sometimes they make- I, I, I can't say it's anime, because anime is kind of like the manga stuff. So comic- comic- they have like a comic video something like that I, you know what i meant and who's boom boom by the way who's boom boom i never heard about boom boom i only know boom boom chicken <laughs> goes up and you don't see his face and you hear that deep booming voice it's rather intimidating some of the voices start off a little shaky, like I remember Kitty Pride kind of sounded a little weird and Xavier sounded a little weird, but as time goes on, they do get better. Some characters I feel like they just didn't know what to do with after a while, like of Spike course. is kind of tossed the out part of the of X-Men after a while, which is weird, he's been there for several seasons. This is some of the earlier Marvel media to actually use an expanded universe, you actually do get to see Nick Fury in this, and S.H.I.E.L.D. and some of this other stuff that you don't really see outside of the comics, but nowadays everybody knows what they are. Now with all that said, this sounds like this would be ten times better than the original animated series, and 
Well, it's close. It, it is different. It's kind of like comparing Batman Begins to Batman. One definitely takes much more time to dive into the psychological and the details yeah. that the characters are going through, but it does kind of lose that epic size. When X-23 shows up, for example, it's a great setup, and man, she's like this clone of Wolverine, and she's like this little kid, and she's going back and forth between she wants to be a little kid, but she also wants to be a weapon, and you don't always <laughs> know if she's going to be good or bad, or if she's crying, is she really crying, or is she just trying to trick someone? Nice. She's only in like two episodes. And at the end of the episode, when Wolverine figures this out, oh my god, here's this clone, it's practically my daughter, it just kind of ends with him playing mm. dodgeball with everyone, saying, oh, well, I've learned a lot, and yeah, that doesn't feel right. The original animated series crammed in a lot of information, but Was it the they daughter? did have to sacrifice a little bit of character for that. Yes, the characters were going through a lot, but you couldn't take as much time as a show like this does, where they really will let someone just kind of sit there and be with their emotions. It was kind of like Clone Wars, the story drove the characters. Here, the characters drive the story, but it is still an animated kid show that has to squeeze in a lot of characters and a lot of fighting and a lot of bullet points that people <laughs> want to see in a comic book kid show. Yeah. And it doesn't always juggle. After you work out, you can feel worn out. Power and rise it that great. For example, there's a whole season, hell, I'd even argue a couple seasons, that's building up Apocalypse. Okay, I love that. That's really good build-up, but when you actually get to him and the big finale with him, it's okay. Where in the original animated series, when they have to do a big finale, it was a big finale. It felt big. It felt epic. Everything felt earned. I was really impressed to see Asteroid M was in this. Oh my god, it was so cool to finally see that on a TV show, but... Gets built up and just kind of taken out in an episode or two and never comes back. I get the feeling there were a lot of talks behind the scenes of where the show should go and in yeah, what I way it so. should go there and which characters to focus on and everything, which, yeah, is expected. That's part of a TV show, but because we were so used to so much being crammed into the original animated series, it always felt big. This one felt more emotional, but not really large in scale. Even the final episode is kind of a series finale, but also kind of saying, hey, if you home. want another season, everybody, we can do it. We got ideas, which obviously never happened. And it is a shame. Aww. I would have liked to have seen this explored even more. Right. But yes, That's don't cool. get me wrong. I'm still really, really recommending this, especially if you're an X-Men fan. It kind of juggles all X-Men media in one show. Yeah, we gotta watch the it, man. movies and the original animated series and years and years of comics. Hell, their end credits is a send-up to their old trading cards. That is a crazy detail. Mm. But yes, there are gonna be slip-ups here and there and some things that don't connect and that does stop it from having that epic feel. Even I mean, though there are times where it can feel how pretty big, but not epic big. I'm still going Whoa. back to the original Pause. animated series when I think of X-Men. What is X-Men? I think of the comics, like the Jim Lee stuff, or I think of the animated series. Like, that's it in a nutshell for me. But this is an interesting experiment that really does pay off. Almost like it's trying to combine all the things you know about X-Men, but still make something new as well. Mm -hmm. You can't really point to this X-Men and say, oh, that's the movie, or oh, that's the Jim Lee version. No, it is uniquely its own thing, but it does have so many echoes of so many other different types of X-Men. And I really do appreciate yeah. that. If you're into X-Men, it's absolutely required viewing. If you're not an X-Men fan, I don't know if it's going to win you over, but it might. I can definitely see kids and teens really getting into it. I don't know how many new adult fans and would really No, new adults. It, but you never know. Right here, right here, right here. I could definitely say after all these years, I'm so glad everybody recommended it to me. And if you're an X-Men fan who hasn't checked it out, report to the Danger Room immediately. I like that picture right there. Guys, this is crazy. I don't know why I never knew about it or why I never like literally like look up, look for it. But this is great. This is great. I want to watch it. You hear me, babe? We got to watch this, okay? Lemon? Okay.
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, let me go here. Whoa. Okay, let me, let me, let me see. So. Oh. All right, so the video that we do. Oh. The video just we the video that we just watched guys was requested by Lemon Mirka 230. Thank you for your request. This is the reaction soon to be posted.